Good morning. Welcome to this worship service broadcast from St. Mark's Presbyterian Church in Aurelia, Ontario. My name is Gordon Timbers, and I'm filling in for the Reverend Linda Patton Cowie as she takes some well-earned vacation time, and we trust that she is enjoying this opportunity for relaxation and reconnection with her family. As we come to this time of worship and fellowship, we're thankful for the beautiful music provided by Mary Jo Wilson. We don't have any choir members to lead the singing of the hymns this morning, so you're invited to make use of the printed words on the order of service attachment where you access this service. You have the words and you have the opportunity to sing your way through the hymns. And you know that saying about dancing like no one is watching? Well, this is your chance to sing like no one is, is listening. You can just enjoy yourself putting the words to the music. So we thank Mary Jo for providing the music, and as always, we appreciate the technical, technical expertise of Larry Windrum in recording this service, and we're thankful to Irene Malik for distributing it to the congregation and beyond. And something else we appreciate and acknowledge is that this service is being broadcast from land that has been part of the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, specifically Ojibwe Chippewa people, from whom we can learn much about caring for the gifts of the Creator in the natural world around us. We're grateful for their stewardship and for all that we learn from them and for all that we share with them. One of the many ways in which biblical writers try to describe the character of God is to use words for characteristics of God. They, they say that God is love, God is light, God is peace. Words like these help us to articulate the, the blessing we have in our relationship with God. In verse after verse, the writer of Psalm 36 declares, God's steadfast love extends to the heavens. God's unfailing love is precious. God's faithful love will continue. And the writer also affirms that those who know the reality of God's love will live their lives with purpose and meaning. And so in the strength of that promise, we come now to worship God and to share fellowship together. Let us pray. God, through the use of technology, we are able from wherever we are to come together for a time of focusing our hearts and minds on our relationship with you and with the people and world around us. We are people who know we need a connection with you and with one another. And we're thankful that we have the blessing of a shared faith and a fellowship in which we can be open and honest with ourselves, with one another, and with you. And so, we can confess that like Zacchaeus in the Gospel story, we also sometimes find ourselves up a tree, either by thinking ourselves better than those around us, or by recognizing that our actions have been out of keeping with your will and purpose for our lives. And so, God, for those thoughts and actions that have been inconsistent with the leading and guiding of your Spirit, forgive us. 
Help us to be agents of positive change, doing what we can to make the world a better place for all your people. We take guidance and comfort from the words Jesus taught us to to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have the wonderful assurance that God is merciful, ready to forgive and to bring us new life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and friend. And for this gift of amazing grace, we offer our thanks to God. The words and music of our first hymn give us a beautiful lead into our worship theme for this morning, God is Love. Maybe some of the younger folk listening will know of a game that was popular when many of us older folks were kids. What would happen is that one of the kids in a group would stand on a chair or run up to the top of a snowdrift or climb up on a shed, stand there and take a look around, spread their arms wide and declare, I'm the king of the castle and you're the dirty rascal. It's an old game. It's a, it's a fun game, as long as you get to be the kid standing high above all the others. And you know, 
When you're at the top of a hill or a snowbank, there are things you can see up there that you couldn't see so well from down on the ground. And maybe you can think of some situations where you would want to climb higher, where you, you want to get up, where you can get a better view. And it might be at a, a stadium where you want to see the whole playing field in front of you. Or if you're at a, a theater, you might want to sit up on the balcony so you have a, a really good view of what's happening on stage. Or if a parade is going by, you might want to be able to see above the, the heads and shoulders of the people in front of you. This morning, we're going to read a Bible story about someone who had to climb a tree to see what he wanted to see. And he was looking to see Jesus, who was walking by on the road. This person's name was Zacchaeus. And as it turns out, there were a lot of reasons why people didn't like Zacchaeus very much. But Jesus saw him up in that tree. And Jesus looked at him and asked him to come down so that they could have a meal and a visit together. In doing this, Jesus wanted to show Zacchaeus and to show all the people crowded around. He wanted to show them that God welcomes and cares for everyone. A lesson we get from this story is that Jesus wants us to include everyone in the circle of God's love. And we can think of ways in which we can do that in the days of this coming week. Include everyone in the circle of God's love. An interesting theme connecting the psalm and gospel reading this morning is that they both say something about size. And you know, we've heard the saying that size matters. And perhaps we can get a new perspective on this from these readings as we come to Scripture. Let us pray. God, open our minds to receive and understand your message. Then open our hearts to respond and put that message into practice. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is uh, selected verses from Psalm 119. And the portion of this, which is the longest psalm in the, in the Bible, the portion that we're going to read this morning, recognizes what, that while any of us may at times feel small or rejected, we can stand tall and we can be secure in our trust in God's law and God's justice. And so we read, You are righteous, Lord, and your laws are right. The statutes you have laid down are righteous. They are fully trustworthy. My zeal wears me out, for my enemies ignore your words. Your promises have been thoroughly tested, and your servant loves them. Though I am lowly and despised, I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is everlasting, and your law is true. Trouble and distress have come upon me, but your commands give me delight. Your statutes are always righteous. Give me understanding that I may live. And we turn from the psalm to our New Testament reading, Luke 19, verses 1 to 10. This is the story of a man up a tree. But the man, Zacchaeus, doesn't stay there. He hears and he responds to the invitation from Jesus to come down and share hospitality together. And from this encounter, Zacchaeus makes a new start in life. And that same invitation and that same opportunity for change is available to us. So we read, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. 
He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed Jesus gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today, Salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Amen. And we thank God for these words to us. Today's New Testament reading was taken from the 19th chapter of Luke's Gospel. But if you look back to the very beginning of chapter 1, you'll see that this book is dedicated to a man named Theophilus. And that name means one who loves God. Another person in this book with an interesting name is the man who is a major character in today's reading, Zacchaeus, was hoping to see Jesus whose name means the Lord is salvation. The name Zacchaeus means righteous, which has to be seen as more than a bit ironic, considering that Zacchaeus is a very rich and probably corrupt tax collector. It's safe to assume that in his life and work, Zacchaeus has strayed a long way from living up to his name. He was anything but righteous. And yet, Luke's gospel gives us this amazing story in which both Jesus and Zacchaeus are seeking each other and both see value and potential in the other. Back in our Sunday school days, or maybe when at church camp, some of us will have learned the song about the day Jesus came to town and met Zacchaeus. You may remember the words. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. You know, you have to give Zacchaeus credit. He knew he couldn't elbow his way through the crowd to get to the side of the road. So he let go of personal pride and inhibition, and he got himself up a tree. And he did that so that he would be able to see Jesus. And the wonderful coincidence is that just as Zacchaeus is seeking Jesus, Jesus is seeking Zacchaeus. But when the people look at Zacchaeus, all they see is an agent of the hated Roman occupiers. To them, Zacchaeus is a man who has become wealthy by cheating his neighbors. And they're quite willing to leave him alone and up a tree in more ways than one. In preceding chapters, Luke has written down what Jesus has taught about seeking a, a lost inheritance, lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost or prodigal son. And in this chapter, 
Luke is writing about Zacchaeus, a man who has lost his place in society. In his greed, he has lost sight of his own worth and his place within the community, just as the the rest of the community chose not to see him as one of them. They were quite willing to leave him alone and lost. And it it doesn't take much of a stretch of the imagination to assume that Zacchaeus could represent any of us or all of us in our basic humanness. We all have a need to be accepted and included. Zacchaeus represents anyone who has ever felt lost, anyone who is just waiting to be found. And you know, with all this emphasis on being lost, the gospel now brings us to what happened in this encounter with Jesus. We aren't given all the details of what happened in the time Jesus spent at the home of Zacchaeus, but the fact that Jesus even went to his home is another clear instance of Jesus openly and publicly accepting and including those people often seen as outsiders, as people on the margins. And because he has been accepted and included by Jesus, Zacchaeus can now see himself and see his world differently. He now sees his neighbors, not just as sources of income, but as people who, like him, have their own needs and vulnerabilities. And Zacchaeus sees his own need for forgiveness. And the thing is that he does something about it. He makes generous restitution to those he has harmed. He gives half his yearly income to the poor, and he'll return any stolen funds four times over. This is Zacchaeus, clearly demonstrating the change Jesus made in his life. And Jesus declares that Zacchaeus is also a son of Abraham. And this declaration was as much a reminder for his neighbors as it was for Zacchaeus. He is recognized as one of God's own. And he takes this opportunity to express his gratitude. And he does that by turning his whole life around. And the story doesn't end there. The community now had opportunity to make their response. And it isn't always easy for any group to bring back in people who have previously been excluded. Even when there's a a plea for forgiveness and an offer of restitution. We all know how hard it is to let someone who has hurt us to let that person back into our lives. So this story, even though it's so familiar to us, even though it's the stuff of Sunday school lessons and countless sermons and, and even songs, We come to this story so that we can see in a new way what Jesus is asking people to practice, and that is this model of restoration, this way of of inclusion that God has shown by forgiving the people time and time again. We, too, are asked to forgive. We, too, are asked to make room for former outsiders And the wonderful thing is that when we do this, like Zacchaeus, they will be changed, and so will we. Amen. You have the printed words to to put to the music of our next hymn, Come, Let Us Sing of a Wonderful Love.
And now let us pray. How good it is, God, to have this story of Jesus welcoming and being welcomed by Zacchaeus. We learn from it that you find us wherever we are, and you invite us into a relationship that promises growth and understanding of who we are as your people and how we can show love and caring for one another. We thank you, God, for this reminder that when we know ourselves to be in your presence and when we offer ourselves for service, our lives are, are changed, uh, transformed. We can willingly expand our circle of caring. We can extend our expression of hospitality and inclusion. As Jesus called Zacchaeus to hurry and come down from being up in a tree, we pray that we can respond to the call to be quick to speak, to be quick to act in ways that extend the love of Christ. May we be eager to seek and eager to offer forgiveness. May we be eager to receive and eager to give hospitality. May we be generous as individuals and as a national population. May we be generous in making restitution for harm done to others, past or present. Help us to work together to achieve reconciliation and peace. God, you know the concerns of the world. You know the broken places where your creation has been spoiled by war and violence, by hunger and need. We lift these places to you, trusting that through us, and through the goodwill and actions of your people everywhere, peace will be found, justice will be done, and your freedom will be known. We offer these and all the unspoken prayers of our hearts in the name of Jesus, the one who came to seek and to save those lost and in need. Amen. The gifts we give of our time, our energy, our money, are practical expressions of our faith. These gifts are valuable extensions of the ministry we share as Christians. These gifts bring change in the people and world around us. And in the act of willing and generous giving, we also are changed. Thank you for the support you provide to this congregation and to individuals and agencies expressing Christ's care and compassion. And now we have the, the words to put to the music of a hymn to take us into the days of the new week ahead of us. The hymn is, He Leadeth Me.
we go from this time of worship and fellowship to continue celebrating God's presence in our lives. And as we go, we bless one another with the words of invitation to go now in peace. Amen.